Okay, you see this? This represents everything we know about the science of effective note-taking. This is quite literally the product of more than 3,000 experiments published since 1833. But there's a problem, because as you can see right here, there's a hole. There's a question that has been left unanswered by all of these studies and that make the research on note-taking incomplete. And so what we're gonna do in this video is first walk you through all of the evidence we know regarding the utility of notes and the best way to take them, and then in the end we'll explain how this little hole right here makes us wonder if anything we said is actually correct. But before we do that, a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, PDF Element. PDF Element is my favorite all-around PDF editor. The reason I use it so much is because it offers so much more than the average editor. Of course, you can highlight, type, and add pictures, but there's so much more than that. For instance, PDF Element is the only app I've used that allows the resizing of the content. So for instance, let's say you want to annotate but a space is becoming too crowded. Well, worry not, because with PDF Element you can move the text, shrink it, and have all the space you need to write, draw, add pictures, sticky notes, you name it. Additionally, with the best-in-class finder, you can organize in the most dense and confusing book. You can rapidly browse the text through chapters and annotations and find just what you're looking for in a matter of seconds. And with PDF Element new OCR feature, you can recognize text from scanned PDFs and images, and so everything you were previously unable to copy and paste now ready to be extracted, edited, and even converted from image to text, just like that. And so whether you want to create, edit, organize, annotate, read, or protect your PDFs, PDF Element is the best tool for the job. You can download it right now using the link below. Okay, so the first question we should ask ourselves whenever we're analyzing any study technique is, should we even bother? Like, is there even a benefit of taking notes? And so that was the first question I set out to answer. And I searched everywhere. I quite literally read hundreds and hundreds of papers searching for an experiment that finally proved that notes were actually useful. But to my surprise, most of the papers I read didn't even bother in confirming this. Most just accepted the premise that notes were useful for some reason and went ahead to test a specific detail about them. This frustrated the hell out of me. But fortunately enough, by going through all of these papers, I started to see a pattern. I started to notice how every time a study said that notes were useful, the same name popped up again and again. And that name was Kiwera. Kiwera? Kiera? Let's call it Kiera, okay? And as you can see, the name pops up everywhere. So this has to be the study that proves notes are useful, right? Well, not quite. You see, Kiera was not interested in comparing the usefulness of taking notes versus not taking notes. He, as well as almost everybody else, just stated that notes were useful and proceeded to answer a more specific question about them. In this case, the question he tried to answer was why they were useful. Was the taking of the notes or the reading of the notes what was useful? To answer this question, he randomized 96 students to one of three groups. The first group would attend class, take notes, and review those notes for 22 minutes before taking a test. The second group would attend class, take notes, but not review those notes before taking a test, and the third group would not attend class nor take notes, but would have 22 minutes to read the notes of a partner that did attend class, and then they would take the same test as everybody else. In this way, we have a group that takes notes and reads them, another that just takes them, and another that just reads them. And these were the results. As you can see, the group that took notes and read them performed the best, which is not really a surprise if you think about it. The surprise, however, is that the group that did not attend class and just read the notes of a partner performed second best. And so, although this paper is not really answering the question, are notes useful? It is answering the question, what is the useful thing about notes? Which, according to this study, is not taking them, is reading them. And according to that logic, it's easy to understand the next conclusion of the study, which is that the more you read, the better you perform. To conclude this, they subdivided the groups that took notes in three different note-taking systems. Two that maximize the quantity, or as they call it, the completenessness, completenessness, completeness of the notes, and one group that didn't. And as you can see right here, it is truly the case that the more you annotate, the more you read, and the more you read, the better you perform. Okay, so this means that I should take as much notes as possible and read them, right? Well, not necessarily. I actually saw that advice being given by popular web pages, and they cited the study of Kira as their source. But what these web pages and Kira himself failed to acknowledge was a teeny tiny detail called time. Indeed, any cognitive psychologist worth its weight will tell you that timing of the evaluation is everything. In fact, many studies, like the ones from Rodiger in 2006, have shown time and time again that the same study technique could quite literally be the best one for the job when evaluated immediately, or the worst one ever when evaluated one week later. 
And this is crucially important because I don't know about you, but most of the exams I study for don't occur 22 minutes after the class. They occur days to weeks after. So this got me thinking that what we really need to find is a study that has a true control group, a group that doesn't interact in any way or form with notes, that doesn't take them, doesn't read them, doesn't do anything with notes to allow us to confidently conclude that notes are in fact better than no notes. And secondly, we need a study that evaluates knowledge not only immediately, but also after a few days or weeks to see if the effect is persistent or just transitory. And that also analyzes if the way we take notes creates different outcomes in the short versus long term. And so after going through a few papers, I found one that had half of these characteristics. This study was conducted by Willand and Kingsbury, and just as we needed, they had one group that attended class and took notes, and one group that attended class but didn't take any sort of notes and instead just paid attention. Then both groups presented the same test immediately after the class was over and another test 10 days later. And as you can see by this graph, the group that took notes performed better in both tests, confirming that taking notes is better than just paying attention. Okay, so notes are better than no notes, right? Well, not really. I also believe that was the case for a long time, but I was wrong. You see, what this study shows is that notes are better than just going to class and paying attention, not that notes are better than no notes. I know that sounds kind of confusing and it's because this introduces a bit of the hole we mentioned a few minutes ago, but I don't want to enter in that territory just yet. We're going there, bear with me, but I want to finish the line of thought we're exploring first. Okay, so by this point we know that notes are superior than just paying attention in class, but what about the recommendations of Kira? Are the completeness of the notes and the reading of those notes the most relevant aspects of note taking when evaluated? long term? Well, to answer that question, we'll see one of my favorite studies done by Bui. So this study basically had 76 students taking notes in a class. Half of them would try to take those notes by focusing on the quantity of their notes, as Kira recommended. They were explicitly advised to try to annotate as much information as possible, basically transcribe the lecture. The second group, on the other hand, were instructed to emphasize the quality and not so much the quantity of their notes. They were instructed to explicitly focus not on the amount, but on the organization of the content. Then they took an immediate test and a delayed test 24 hours later. In both instances, they weren't able to review their notes. And these were the results. So as you can see, when the test was performed immediately, the best technique was hands down transcribing, which replicates what Kira proved in his experiment, right? But and here comes the interesting part, when you let just 24 hours go by, the results change. The group that transcribed significantly drops performance, whereas the group that took organized notes maintains his performance and ends up with the highest score overall. Okay, so then I should take notes, but I should focus more on the quality of the notes, the organization, and not so much the quantity, right? Well, there's a problem, because so far we've reviewed only the taking of the notes, and as you may remember, Kira himself concluded that it was the review and not the taking of the notes the important factor. And so here's where the third experiment of Bui comes in. In this third experiment, Bui allowed participants to review their notes before the 24-hour exam. And as you can see, the results show that when participants are able to read their notes, those with more complete notes perform better once again. Okay, so then I should take as much notes as possible and read them before the exam, right? No. Why? Because of the hole. Here is where the infamous hole makes an entrance. You see, the problem with each and every one of the studies we've analyzed, and in fact with most of the note-taking research available, is that it tends to create false dichotomies. A false dichotomy to those unfamiliar with the term means thinking incorrectly that only two options exist. And that is what has been happening with every single study so far. They all have compared one intervention to another. Taking notes versus reading them. Taking notes versus paying attention. Taking more notes versus taking less notes. And doing this kind of experiment is great. I mean no hate to the researchers or their studies. But what is not great is having an experiment that compares two interventions, proves that one is better than the other, and then it starts saying, therefore, students should do this. That last step is the mistake. Let me give you an example of why this is so incorrect. Let's say I'm trying to figure out what is the fastest way to travel from city A to city B, and I come across a study that compares traveling by train versus traveling by bus, and concludes that traveling by train is two times faster, and that therefore, train is the recommended mode of transportation. Should I then take the train? No, I should not, because taking an airplane is five times faster than taking the train. But as you just saw, the airplane is nowhere to be mentioned in the study. The experiment created a false dichotomy, and that's why I cannot use it to make a decision. 
The same thing happens here. We have a bunch of studies comparing two interventions and saying this one is better than this one, and then concluding that's why you should use it without acknowledging that there might be a third or four option that makes both of these options irrelevant. And I hate to break it to you, but in this case, notes are everything except the plane of the story. To give you an example of what I mean by this, I want to show you a study conducted by Romer and Schrepp. In this study, 98 students were set out to memorize and learn the same document, but they were going to do it through different means. So that's why they were randomized to one or three groups. Every single group started by reading the same text in the first study session. In the second study session, however, the first couple of groups proceeded to take notes on the text, whereas the third one proceeded to do a test. This test consisted in simply grabbing a blank piece of paper and annotating everything they could remember about the document. This is quite literally the most basic form of an open-ended question test and is standard in these types of studies. After doing this, there was a third study session where the first group would read their notes, the second would do a test like the third group did in the second session, and the third group would repeat the same test a second time. Finally, after doing all of this, there was a fourth study session where everybody was going to reread either their notes in the first couple of cases or the original text in the case of the third group. And these were the results in an exam two weeks later. As you can see, the worst group was without a doubt the one that just read and took notes. That was the boss of the story. The other two groups performed better. And although you can see a slight increase in performance in the group that did tests and took notes, the difference was not statistically significant according to the authors. And so if we guide ourselves by these types of studies, which is the vast minority, although every single one concludes the same, we would say that between taking notes and testing ourselves, testing yourself is hands down the best option. It is the plane of the story. And so that is the problem with note-taking research. That is the whole we're talking about. That 99% of studies start by saying, hey, notes are awesome, they are good, they are helpful, and that's why we're going to be analyzing this specific thing about them, because it's a given fact that they are useful. But then you try to see the studies from where the evidence of such greatness actually comes from, and it's nowhere to be found. And yes, for sure, there are studies that prove that notes are better than just paying attention in class or just reading. But that's not at all the same as notes are overall good and, and helpful and you should definitely take them. So, should you take notes? So of course not, you just said it. Well, actually, I give up. You see, in the same way I critique the literature for creating false dichotomies, I don't want to create false dichotomies here. So I want to be as clear as possible with my argument. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take notes. I'm not saying that notes are bad. All I'm saying is that you shouldn't just take notes. Having said that, I do believe there are ways to take notes that make sense according to the evidence. And as far as I can tell, those ways are possible as long as you fit one of the following two scenarios. Scenario number one is if you have time for everything. If for some strange reason you manage to take notes, read them, and on top of that, do other effective study techniques. If that's your case, great, go ahead by all means. But I want to be clear here. If you don't have the time, you can be sure that deciding to take notes and reading them is not helping you. It's hurting you because you're literally sacrificing the time you could be spending using other better techniques. Scenario number two is if you manage to find a way to integrate notes in a multi-strategy system that hits two birds with one stone. This is the category I find myself in. So what I typically do to pull this off is that I take notes not during class or while I'm reading, but after the class or after I'm done reading. By doing this, the very same act of taking the notes becomes the act of testing myself. And if you think about it, all I'm doing is really is like grabbing the protocol of Rummer, the auto evaluation protocol of Rummer, but just keeping the notes. So I have the option of reading them later in case I want to. Now, I want to be clear with this. The evidence does not confidently conclude that adding this last step of taking notes and reading them to a protocol that already has other strategies going on makes for better results. Some papers say it does, others say it doesn't. Truth is, we don't know. But that's the problem. That's the hole that makes us wonder if anything we've said so far is actually useful. But well, although I can't answer whether you should take notes or not, I can answer a few other points that are as clear as it gets. So take the following explanations as the take home messages from this video. Message number one, although the evidence can support zero note taking systems as valid and effective learning protocols, those systems cannot be just going to class and paying attention or reading the text and that's it. No, to make a zero note taking strategy work, you have to find something that replaces the notes. Your mere attention is simply not enough. And that is quite clear. 
Message number two is that whether you're going to be taking notes or not, make sure to include other strategies besides taking the notes. Simple auto evaluations like the ones from Rummer, practice questions, flashcards, metacognitive strategies, retrieval cues, like you name it, there are plenty of great techniques you can use. If you want some help with these sort of techniques, I suggest you sign up for my upcoming course on the science of effective learning. In this course, I'll walk you through the best study techniques that 200 years of research have produced. You can sign up using the link below, and once the class is released, I'll send you an email with a free trial so you can watch the whole class for free. Finally, message number three is that in general, you should avoid taking notes by transcribing the content. Yes, you'll find some studies like the ones from Kiara and Boy that make it seem like transcribing is, oh my god, the best technique of all. But keep in mind, these results stem from immediate tests, and the benefits of this sort of techniques are very short-lived. Sure, you can keep the benefit of going a little bit longer by rereading your notes constantly, but the same thing will happen over and over again. You read today, perform great in the test tomorrow, and then in a week, you remember nothing. But well, as you can probably see, there are still a lot of things to talk about. After all, summarizing the results of thousands of papers in a single video is kind of difficult. So do let me know, does this topic interest you? And if so, what do you want to know? I'll try to keep that in mind for a future video. But for now, thanks a lot for tuning in, and here's another video you might find interesting. I'll see you guys in the next one.